So my name is Victor Frost. Uh, I'm a professional podcaster, I'm an audio engineer, and I'm a student of radio production at California State University, Northridge. Uh, this is my lovely friend, Amanda Fierro, and uh, she is a writer, an artist, a crafty crafter, and a student of biology and art at California State University, Northridge. Uh, the thing we both have in common is, like most of you, I presume, we are internet people. And uh, we are, the other thing is that we are both people with an interest in the art, and unfortunately that comes t with a, uh, the rather tumultuous territory of dealing with people's comments and their opinions and other unsavory things we'd rather not have to deal with. Bullshit, mostly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the thing is that here's the general idea of this lecture. So if you want to, you can decide whether or not you want to stay here. In the faceless medium that is the internet, because let's face it, that's his biggest advantage. It's really far too easy to be cruel and illogical when dealing with things that you don't like. It's sort of the natural behavior of people to fall into their cruelest state. Even, and, but today we're gonna teach you how to express your opinion, uh, even if others might disagree, but still avoid being the dreadful troll All right. So this is the dramatic pause for those of you who still want to be All the right. troll. <laughs> so I'm gonna. So recently, on uh, one of my favorite artists, Brentel Floss, uh, he has a comic, and this recently came out. I'm going to read it to you. So it's a bit of a story time. <clears throat> if you're surfing the web with a big open heart, and you muster the courage to share thoughts or art, a betankerous beast may crawl out of his hole. He is the crinkiest craggart, the obvious troll. Obvious troll is obvious. <laughs> the obvious troll is a slagnanimous sort, chips away at your smile as he scoffs with a snort. The obvious troll doesn't come to make friends. He makes war and disorder, but never amends. When he's hungry, he'll feed on a blog or a forum, but he'll starve and go elsewhere if you can ignore him. Obvious troll is obvious. We may never know why the troll does it at all. Is his blumpus too big or his grudel too small? His heart may have nothing but bedbugs inside, so he scratches his itch being snarky and snide. His trolling may, may be a hormonal imbalance, his only real skill in a world full of talents. Or maybe he's sad because his parents divorced, though he may just be naturally horrid, of course. Obvious troll is obvious. Hey writers and artists and online musicians, being nice and uplifting should be your positions, for feeding a troll can make nightmares come true, and you may one day find that the real troll is you. So be a swell swift, be an untroll at that, try a thoughtful thought on like a fancy new hat. When we're wrinkly and old, all the memories we'll save are the unselfish kindness we got and gave. I know, that just kind of warms my heart, that last big. He's just so happy. So. <laughs> scumbag projector. So the troll. There we go. I do believe this is your section. <laughs> All right, so how do we identify being a troll? Uh, a troll is someone who, regardless of whether or not they actually like something, will publicly criticize it in such a way as to provoke others into getting angry or pissed off or just being betankerous. <laughs> that is pretty much what I think the inside of a troll looks like when they're being a troll. And this all kind of stems from, uh, and let me see, kids, no, no kids. <laughs> Right. All right. <laughs> so I think this 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 is all really summed up by uh, how many of you read Penny Arcade? Good. Good. Okay. So um, John Gabriel's Greater Internet Fuckwad Theory. Uh, you take a normal person, give them a little bit of anonymity plus a willing audience or maybe unwilling, and you get a total fuckwad. It's. <laughs> It's really, it's really, honest to goodness, pretty damn accurate. Online gaming, Xbox Live, the whole bit, just this 
all of this. This is what uh, some old school trolling, got some archival photos here. Yeah. All righty, guys. So for the next portion, go ahead and click. Okay, click. For the next portion, we're going to go over the typical ploys of the troll. Now, they tend to sit inside stereotyping. So the troll is just there to create an argument just for the hell of creating an argument, which is why we're kind of like, no. So the first one I wanted to go over with you guys was the religious stereotype. And primarily what they'll end up doing is you guys have seen it everywhere. It's on YouTube. It's on every forum. It's on everything. They go and they find your belief systems like your god or your gods or the general belief in the afterlife or the lack thereof. And then uh, they also use as well of our conspiracy theories. So our conspiracy guys out there. And then they'll sit there and they'll take the nicest pokes at your belief systems so that they can get you riled up and angry and set in your angry face so that they can keep you arguing with them. And then when it moves past just doing your beliefs, it kind of moves into this gender set. Let's go ahead and click. Yeah. So now we have the gender ploy. And again, you guys see this everywhere. <laughs> so basically what ends up happening is, uh, like unfortunately women are the most victimized by this. So guys, when you're playing a video game, how many of you have been told that you like your vagina showing or something? Because you can't play the game or it's your first time playing, right? So that's what you guys are typically set up to. You're either a woman yourself or you're gay. Um, ladies, our existence just isn't there. We're automatically assumed we're a guy if we play well. Now, I can't remember which rule of the internet is, but one of them is, is there are no girls on 4chan or something like that? Or the fact that this whole idea that there are no women on the internet, that's... Yeah. And then if we are there, like we actually state we are a woman, we do have womanly parts here. We get the women's place jokes, you know. Why don't you shut up and go back in the kitchen and make me a sandwich joke. Love that one. And then the sexual innuendos are always abundant, especially in first person shooter games. It's quite lovely. And I actually found this online and it says, I wanted to try a different style of trolling. I don't like it. Back to my old beat. Must have been a woman driver. And yes, for the two vaginas above this post, I'm aware that, this, that I'm a sexist asshole. I don't care. So that's, that's an example, but he was actually being sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, but it is, it is a prime example of how people troll. Like this whole idea is, yeah, I'm an ass and I don't care. And it, I don't, you know, screw all this, politically, all this politically correct bull crap. It's just, this, it, is a, it is quite typical when people are trying to rile them up to say, ah, oh, yeah, who cares about all this political correctness? Yeah, that goes out the window. And then their final ploy is the racial ploy. And what they primarily do to figure out what your race is is they'll use your verbiage, your text, and your slang. And they'll automatically assume what you are. So as you see, I, I found this little JPEG here that I love. And it has a whole bunch of different types of things. So like automatically if somebody types noob, you're going to know they're a gamer. So you're going to assume they're a guy and they're probably white 12 year old boy sitting in the back of their room, you know, playing their video games. And this is what they use. Point, huh? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <right>? <laughs> Thank you for proving my point. <laughs> so along those lines, <laughs> you also get stuff like when, uh, for example, rappers, if you hear a rapper on the radio, you, because they're rapping, there's automatically this sort of image that it's uh, a black guy. Yeah, well, that's the thing. That's why, <laughs> think back, think back, think back to how few white, how few famous white rappers there are. Vanilla Ice, Vanilla Ice one. Eminem, two. Three. Beastie Boys. But then compared to how many black, black rappers, rappers there are. It's the stereotype, It's the stereotype that many it's people hold the in their heads. Does. They inf They roll with these stereotypes. So basically, okay guys, don't get too excited on me. <laughs> so basically, regardless of your personal opinion, being a troll just means you're an asshole and you have no personal interest other than to start an argument. And um, we're going to show you guys what it right. takes to really have an opinion. Yeah, now that's not, now even though trolls are ass assholes, that doesn't mean you can't be a clever asshole. Yes. Because there is an art to assholery. <laughs> you can be clever. <laughs> but I think, I think the, the point is, is that being an asshole is, shouldn't be the default state for people. So please. what we're going to do is we're going to show you, yeah, please, good God. <laughs> um, so 
let's talk about the opinion. Uh, there is a big, there's a certain requirement for having opinions on the internet. Uh, thing is about opinions is that if they were facts, they'd be facts, not opinions. You can say that the, uh, the sky is blue, and we generally accept that as a fact, unless you go into the upper atmosphere, in which case it looks kind of purple. Um, but or you talk to a scientist, oh. in which case it's clear. Yeah, in which case it's clear, and it's merely the refraction of the light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but the thing is that, here's, here's the thing about opinions. They are, number one, uh, personal. Uh, number two, subjective. But funnily enough, number three, opinions are fundamentally based on some amount of reasoning. Uh, the trick is the trick to changing an opinion, a regular opinion, which is, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinions, you know, to a valid opinion, uh, which can be used to convince people to change perhaps their ideas or to just to convey your criticisms, is getting to that reasoning behind the opinion. And many people just can't. It's writer's block, guys. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> TLDR feels. Um, because humans are experiential feeling machines. That's the thing about being human. Every experience always makes feelings for us. We're just, we're, we are so feeling driven beings. That it's just, it's mandatory. We always generate feelings from experiences, even if the feeling is apathy. The reason good science is so hard to do is because it is really hard as humans to divorce ourselves from those feelings. You know, you doing performing tests and you want to see your test results the way you want them to be, to perhaps prove your theory or disprove someone else's. But sometimes we don't understand why we have those feelings. Uh, some people don't like movies in HD because uh, it looks weird. Well, thinking it looks weird is an opinion, and it's all right to have an opinion. But you'll have a hard time convincing others of that opinion if, or even just explaining yourself to them, if all you have is just that statement, HD movies look weird. They look weird. <laughs> I thought, I honestly, I, when I first got an HD TV, after years of, you know, playing old school games on that, I always wondered why they looked weird. I ended up learning, but, <laughs> so, the, but the thing is the personalness of opinions makes it impossible to spread them unless you can effectively translate those root feelings into ideas and words. So knowing what is behind these feelings is crucial. Uh, before you can really hate on something, you kind of have to ask yourself, why do you feel what you feel? Uh, what makes you feel that way? Uh, for example, a person who doesn't like HD movies because they look weird, uh, the reason they might look weird to them is because they've grown up with a standard definition TV their entire lives, dealt with scan lines, with tracking and all that crap, and now they have a television with a much higher resolution and a much higher frame rate versus their old and busted old low frame rate, low res TV. Here's the catch. Um, that doesn't mean the HD TV is actually weird. That just means it's different for them. So is it a valid opinion? Well, yeah, but as long as they under, understand their opinion isn't that the HDTV is weird and that it really is, I don't like it because I'm not used to the quality. A being able to hate on HDTVs without sounding like an old person is kind of the root behind that whole thing. You have to understand that it's, that it's gonna change and your opinion isn't always valid. So, yeah. <laughs> Along the same vein, experience itself is the bare minimum to knowledge. For example, I don't like Twilight because it's a bad movie. From what I've heard, it's terrible. Uh, but have I seen it? No. Uh, my opinion, while it's, a, while it's an opinion, isn't a valid one. Because I haven't experienced the thing I'm criticizing in and of itself. If you haven't experienced something, you can't actually form an opinion on it. You can regurgitate other people's opinions. You can even say, I trust this person, so I believe that their opinion is true, but you can't actually have your own opinion on it. Everyone does this. It happens every day where we take our opinions and we put them to someone else's opinion and decide that their opinion is better but we haven't actually gone through and done the research on it, or we haven't experienced it ourselves. 
So don't feel like it's a personal shot. It's just everybody does it. And it will continue to happen whether we give this lecture or not. Right. I mean, Amazon, Amazon product review system runs on you gauging something based on another person's opinion. And there's a legitimate reason for that. You don't want to waste your money on something that's crap or will fall apart. You don't have to experience everything, but you have to understand that if you haven't experienced it, you can't form your own opinion on it. So the HDTV's person, HDTV's, uh, HDTV hating person, uh, their opinion is more valid than mine because they've actually experienced it, even though their opinion will likely change. See, in order to have a valid opinion, a valid complete opinion, it needs to have some amount of relatability. Relatability means it needs to be part of our shared reality. Okay, it, it can't be just something that's internal to you. Uh, here's an example of a valid opinion. I don't like cars built in the early 1900s, like this Model T, uh, because they're not very good. They have a rough ride, the stopping distance of a Mack truck, and top speeds I could beat on my bicycle. Relatability, it, this is relatable because everyone values comfort, understands stopping ability as related to safety, and likes speed. As for, I, I mean, I think everyone likes speed when it comes to getting their cars. <laughs> So just leaving it at I don't like X because X is bad doesn't make it a valid opinion. Having reasons that are part of reality, the shared reality, does. It takes work to have a valid opinion, okay? Valid opinions also have another name, arguments. Alrighty guys, so now that you guys know what it takes to actually have an opinion, we're gonna go into how you form an argument out of your opinion and actually make sense. And it's not just personal shots anymore. So what I'm gonna go into here, which every good speaker should know, every good writer should know, all the way back from Aristotle, is I'm actually gonna go over pathos, ethos, and logos so you guys know all about them. So <laughs> the first one I'm gonna go over is pathos, which is the argument from emotion. This is the easiest to convey, especially when you're in front of a group like we are now, and we automatically have an emotional connection with the thing before we even start. So the beauty of pathos is that this is how we can start building our credibility. And yes, guys, if you don't have the other two, this does start becoming the troll. So this can be done in multiple ways, all the way down to storytelling, we can go, I can walk out personally to you guys and start asking you guys questions and it can get really good. Um, the next one I wanted to go over to avoid being the troll is ethos, which is now the ethics of your argument or your own ethics rather. And the ethics is built by both the audience and the speaker. So you're not gonna walk into a church and start talking about abortion and how they should support, should support it. And if you do, I really, really hope you have good arguments because it's not going to end well for you. Now, with the ethics, there's actually uh, three categories. There's feronius, which is the practical skills and wisdom. So at that point, it's like a surgeon talking about his surgery that he did. So he has the skill and the wisdom to talk about it. Then yeah, you it's have like, look, I gave you guys an example of a car I don't like. For ex a one way I could justify my opinion being valid, making that into an argument, would be I'm a professional driver. I have driven thousands of cars. I've test driven cars. I know a lot about cars. And this is why I, this is my qualification for saying that this is a bad car, for example. Then there's Erede which this one here is virtue and goodness. So that's kind of like your own personal background. Now, a lot of times when you go to bigger places, they'll give you a little bit of background on yourself and the speaker. And sometimes they'll give you background inside your programs. At that point, if you're a convicted criminal, your ethics is gone. <laughs> they, they're not going to believe well, you. Rather, well, rather your ethics are thrown into legitimate suspect. Uh, that too. <laughs> but it's not going to be a good way to start and form ethos with your audience either. And the last one is Eunonia, which this one here is the goodwill towards the audience. So that goes back to me saying, you're not going to walk into a church and start talking about abortion. It's just, just not going to work. Because you're not having goodwill towards your audience. You, you have this ill will already set out. Like you're already in there going, I hate you guys because you're not going to let me go through and have abortion if I end up having a child that I don't want. Uh, like, for example, if you're running a panel saying why Naruto is awesome, which 
I don't personally subscribe to that opinion, but if you're running a panel that says why Naruto is awesome and you and when people come in, you bar the doors and say, now this is why Naruto sucks. Your, your entire <laughs> Unonia is thrown into suspect because you have literally tricked your audience and are now yelling at them. You start off <laughs> on a panel with entire ill will. Which is the troll, guys. Yep. <laughs> now there's the violations of ethos. Yes, you can actually violate it. And what this is, is if the speaker has a direct interest in the outcome, they have violated the, the outcome of the actual results. So they're sitting there and they're already personally invested in it, they're already ready to go, but they want it to turn out a certain way. So they're gonna sit here and just, it's gonna go all whack on you. That kind of thing shows up a lot in, uh, for example, skewed results in science. Yes. <laughs> it's a, what is it, confirmation bias or personal bias? What is uh, it? Confirmation bias. Yeah. And then the next way that you can do this is you have a vested interest or ulterior, ulterior motive in the outcome. So then at this point now, like say we kind of have an ulterior motive because we really don't want you guys to actually go out and start trolling on us. <laughs> that means that you have violated the ethics of the group. You told them one thing, now you're telling them another, you know. And then the final one is having no expertise. Like you have never experienced, you've never worked in it, you've never done anything that would make it credible. But you can't also go off the violations and say, well, you violated this one thing, so I'm gonna disregard your argument entirely. You can't do that. There are the violations and you wanna try to keep to them, but you can't just disregard someone's argument because they violated one of them. It's sort of like a, a soft requirement. It's for like the two-thirds vote, guys. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, no, what? <laughs> Wait, no, what? <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. Okay, and the final one I want to go over, you got me laughing now, is Logos, the argument of reason. And guys, let's face it, this is the hardest to testify against. This has no bias at all. All you are spilling out is data, facts, and information. At this point, if you guys really want to shut somebody up, you go and you get your stuff together, you come back and you give them a bunch of facts and information, they can't fight you. They can't do it. This is the best one out of all the things that you can do right here is logos. Have some reason to it. Go get your facts. And it's really it's great. <laughs> it is. It, facts are the best defense and the best way to make a compelling argument. And it's really hard to do, but... Now... This type of argument yeah. can actually get misconstrued and be turned yeah. into... Logical fallacies. That's where it gets tricky. Because we're humans, we're fallible. Uh, one of the biggest ways we're fallible is we are not perfect logic machines. We don't, we're not computers where we have you know, logic ingrained and hardwired into us. Um, for example, uh, all, logical, all, our, all logical arguments follow a sort of progression from premise to premise. Uh, Get if, ready for math, guys. Yeah, math time. <laughs> so, and it is based on sort of mathematics. So, like, for example, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. It's just, it just works. That is the if, then, this, that. If you're a programmer, you know this by heart. It's a conditional statement, and if you screw it up, then you're going to have a problem with whatever you're writing. And is a logical operator. That's how logic works. Logic is a great tool, but you know we just don't have logic in mind. Usually, we can work without logic. Uh, we have this thing called heuristics, which are mental shortcuts that we sort of keep in our head uh, as rules of thumb. Uh, they work OK, uh, but they are no substitute for real logic. And when you try to not logic in a way that sounds logic, uh, you get logical fallacies. There are many, uh, but a few, but there are a few that happen a lot on the internet. Uh, some easier to refute than others, but all you can avoid with a little bit of work, and that way people can't call bullshit on false logic for you. Okay, so here are some examples. So uh, we're going to do a little bit of back and forth here. <clears throat> Oh, so I believe that abortion is morally wrong. Of course you would say that. You're Christian. <laughs> what about all those arguments I gave you to support my position? Yeah, those don't count. Like I said, you're a Christian, so you have to say abortion is wrong. You just hate freedom. <laughs> so what that was um, <laughs> was an... Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, well, the thing is, what I used in there was a logical fallacy called an ad hominem. 
what it is, it is a personal attack on a person as in a way to discredit their position. Um, this is really good and um, in open sort of forum debates, but it's, it, is the be it is one of the more common logical fallacies. What I did was I basically said that because of something that's personal to her, she has to be wrong or her opinion isn't valid. Okay? I said that she hates freedom, which is, which is, which is, a, is, lie. is a lie. I love freedom, She guys. loves freedom. <laughs> um, but I made, I made a direct attack on her rather than attacking her argument. The great part about this is, guys, it goes back to what I was talking about before, those lovely stereotypes. Yeah. They happen. Yeah, and this could have just gone, he could have just said, well, you're a woman, your opinion doesn't count. Right. And you know what? Here's the thing. Um, there's, you know, there's a reason why she didn't use the car example. Because she's Cause a, I'm a woman. girl. Yeah. Also false. She knows a fair bit about cars. But um, <laughs> another example of an ad hominem attack, you something completely unrelated to the argument. So person A, here's the breakdown. Person A makes claim X. Person B makes an attack on person A, personally. Therefore, person A's claim is false. So it's simple, but it's wrong. <laughs> Next one is an argument from ignorance. Uh, it doesn't really prove anything about X. It really only knows that person X doesn't know anything about X. So, so I call it the Bill O'Reilly argument. Um, you may know this. <laughs> uh, if I can't explain X, X must be false. Brett goes in, toast pops up. Can't explain that. Oh, and there we go. We got some laughs in here. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you guys got through the serious did, well, did I tell you, you these would be internet people? <laughs> I know. Uh, and that, that's the big down of it. It, it really doesn't prove... Any, okay, just because Bill O'Reilly doesn't know how a toaster works <laughs> doesn't mean... Nobody knows how toasters work. It There's just proves that they don't know about how toasters work. Yeah, there's somebody out there who can make a toaster, guys, and they'll tell you how it works. <laughs> I can tell you how a toaster works. I know. <laughs> last, uh, this last one here is called the straw man. Uh, what it does is you actually disregard your opponent's actual position and argue against a misrepresentation of their position. That's usually... If, at least if you're doing it intentionally, easier to defeat. Um, you're making a straw, what you're basically doing is you're taking your opponent and you're making a straw duplicate of them. And then uh, because, and then you make it say what you want to say, like, oh, uh, whew. I can't think of it. I'm thinking, hold on. I don't use <laughs> these, so I don't think of them. Um, He's too logical, right, make guys. A claim. Make, a, make a claim. Say Guns are wrong. Oh, so you're saying that we shouldn't have the right to protect ourselves. Guns are just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to keep going at you. That's called ad nauseum. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, see, what, so she says guns are wrong. I say, I'm basically taking her, arg her saying that guns are wrong, and let's pretend she has like a whole bunch of lists of reasons why. And I just turn around and say, so you saying we don't have a right to protect ourselves? What I'm doing is I'm making a straw man of her and then proving it wrong and then setting it on fire. <laughs> it's really effective against opponents uh, because, rather, because rather than arguing against your point, uh, they have to spend time to try and explain what their position isn't rather than what it is. Um, if you want to get smashed during an election year, um, take a shot every time a candidate uses a straw man in the debate. I, no, really, I passed out. Um, <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, and that's the logical drinking game, guys. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it is, um, no, really, uh, election, uh, election uh, debates are, are real. Infamous they're for fraught. the straw man. They are fraught with logical fallacies. If you know about them, you can say, you can watch your, you can watch your least favorite candidate. Uh, because you'll always have to be biased towards the favorite, your favorite one, and be like, ah, oh, I can't believe they, that is not, they didn't even answer the damn question. <laughs> and now they're saying some, now they're saying that the other, opponent, the other guy says something completely different. So it's, it's a pain in the ass, but it's really effective, which is why it's so tempting to use. But we know you guys are better than that, right? 
Right. This right. is where you guys have to do audience participation. Faith in humanity, right. maybe. <laughs> right. Okay. There we go. Okay, we got people awake again. <laughs> so here's an example of a straw man from Dilbert. Um, how can you compare outsourcing our restrooms? Are you racist? Um, I didn't say anything remotely like that. Did you learn to debate on the internet? How can you, can you tell? tell? <laughs> so, using logical fallacies, learning, or well, rather avoid using logical, yeah. Okay, guys, so avoid day. using logical this? fallacies, <laughs> avoid using ad hominems, and please, dear God, stop using stereotypes. And Just because one situation's real does not make every single one of them real. And when you want to express an opinion on the internet, actually take the time to learn about what you're talking about, learn how to properly express it in a way. If you want to avoid being trolled, express your, if you can make a logical argument. The and trolls go away. They the can't get to the you. The trolls not only go away, but even if they persist, they're just flapping their gums, so to speak. There's really nothing they can say to make your argument not wrong. I mean, unless your premises are wrong, <laughs> uh, in which case you didn't do your research. But after a little while, they'll just crawl under their bridge and go away anyway. Yeah. So, um, uh, by the way, uh, trolls, are, so trolls are jerks. You don't want to be one. Opinions are fine as long as they're based on reason. You know, really should have put these in there. Uh, <laughs> arguments can be passionate as long as they're back with logic and ethics. And <laughs> You're right clicking. <laughs> Here we go. Come on, you. Yep. Um. Bastard. <laughs> Logical fallacies are wrong, avoidable, and defeatable, but can be very effective. So, uh, everything we said was a lie. Uh, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Class is over, guys. If you have any questions or anything like that, or you care enough to question us, we will be up here. <laughs>